What's up guys, Damien Keyes here. Well, it has been a crazy few weeks and it doesn't look like things are gonna change anytime soon because the coronavirus is kicking in, not just in towns and cities, but across the world. We're seeing borders shut. We're seeing the city that never sleeps, New York, actually taking a snooze as people aren't allowed to go out in nightlife. Same thing for Los Angeles, Vegas. Borders are being cut all across Europe. Schools are being closed down. The shit is hitting the fan. That's right, I can use swear words because I cannot monetize this video because it's about the coronavirus. And now that I've said coronavirus, I might as well go all in. Shit. Now there's a lot of panic out there from musicians and rightly so because musicians are losing their work all of the time, not just in pits, theatres, cruise lines, weddings, corporate gigs, festivals, you name it, it is going down fast. And we need a plan because the last time this happened was 2008 when the whole economy across the world took an absolute pounding and I remember it very very well in fact not only do I remember it but I came out of it very very well so I have some very good advice for you for what you should be doing over the next couple of weeks and months to come out of this recession and let's make no bones about it this is going to be a recession to come out of this on top this is not just a music and music industry problem. This is a worldwide pandemic. The airline industry is being crippled because airlines cannot take off. They are literally grounded. On top of that, the hospitality industry is totally screwed. Hotels going down, spas, events, the music industry screwed. All sporting events seem to be off and everyone is holding out their cap to the governments of all the different countries and saying, we cannot go on, you need to support us, including the entirety of the high street. Meanwhile, Live Nation and AEG, two of the biggest companies in the entirety of the music industry, have stopped everything. They haven't stopped a couple of gigs or a couple of festivals. They have said until further notice, they will be putting on no more events. Now, Live Nation, I don't know if you remember, it lost 4.5 billion off the bottom line, and that was over a week ago. Can you imagine the struggles they are going to be in at the moment? Everyone is looking for a bailout and the governments in the world probably can't afford it. Now, I don't wanna worry you, I'm not there to, to create havoc and cause panic amongst you. What I am here to do is say, this is the severity of the problem. This is gonna be going on for a while. We need an absolute out and out, bona fide, sure solution to make sure that you can navigate your way through the next couple of months so that you don't get screwed by what's happening at the moment. Now I've been through this twice before, probably albeit not as bad as this pandemic, but once in 2001 after Twin Towers where there was a big problem and recession, and at the same point there was another one in 2008 when the economies of the world absolutely collapsed. And at the same point, everyone hoarded their money and said we can't go out, we can't go to events, and more importantly, we can't pay for musicians to entertain us. And there was havoc. So I have been through this twice, I know what the right thing to do is. So strap on your Junior Birdman rocket pants and come with me as I give you my top tips to see you through in our dire time of need. Number one, time to practice up. If you think about it, there are less opportunities than there were last month, but there are a lot more musicians fighting you for that work. If you think about all of the gigs that have been canceled from festivals, weddings, corporate gigs, pit work, cruise line industries has been completely decimated and they've all been put on the mainland, they're fighting for the work. So right now, it is a fight to get that work. So the better you are as a musician, the easier it is for you to get that work. So right now, you have time to get better as your instruments. If you need to go and find a teacher, if you need to get on YouTube and actually look into some technical videos, now is the time. You need to be as good as you possibly can. Tip number two, time to update your marketing. Now as a musician, as time goes by, you're busy gigging and doing your thing, maybe updating some social media, but a lot of the time, you don't keep your actual marketing for getting gigs up to date, and now is the time. Go through all of your marketing. Does it represent you? You don't need to do twice as much marketing. You don't have to double down and go all in. But what you do have to do is make sure that the marketing you have got reflects where you are at and what you can do right now. 
Tip number three, being the hero. And now this one is such a crucial bit of advice. So right now, gigs are going down, musicians are getting ill, but this is an opportunity for you to be able to jump in and help out. Now I know this works because in the last 20 years of my life, I've become friendly with probably 10 agencies and six of those agencies have come about from me saving the day. Me saying to them, yeah, yeah, of course I can jump in and help you with that gig and then they owe me one. And in fact, one of the biggest moves I made was I got a phone call from an agent in 2008 who said, we're desperate, we need someone to travel for five and a half hours to play for 20 minutes. All we've got is petrol money, but no one's gonna do it. And I said, we will do it. And we did that gig and that one gig didn't just fill up that band's diary, but it was enough for me to create 28 bands, an entire business off that one gig of saving the day. Right now, there is a lot of panic, not just amongst musicians, but also amongst agents and also amongst bands whose musicians might get ill. You need to be able to jump in and save the day. But in order to do this, those agencies, those musicians, those bands, they need to know that you exist. They need to know that you are ready to jump in and help them out and save that day. Number four, communication. This one is very, very important. Whilst you are ready to go and do these gigs, how do people know that you are available? So one tip I would suggest is creating a database of musicians, of bands, of agents, and every Monday morning, you send them your availability list. You just say, if you're a drummer, you say, hey guys, just let you know, I have availability on Friday or on Saturday for gigs within three or four hours of your city. If you need me, I will be ready and waiting to take on your gig. What it means is you are now saying, I am ready, I am available, and should something go wrong, you will be the first person that people think of should they need that debt you'll be surprised how many people will not only take you up on that offer, but how many bands then you will get offers from time and time and time again because you have taken a problem away from them. Tip number five, what other instruments can you jump on? If you're a guitarist, let's face it, you can probably play bass to a, to a high enough level. So therefore, go and find a mate who's got an extra spare bass, lend it to you and say, if I need a bass amp, I'm gonna come knocking. Because if you can't get work as a guitarist, you'll be able to get extra work as a bass player. Same thing if you can play some extra keys, if you can sing right now, if you can play that extra bit of instrument, you are definitely more hireable. Number six, you need to lower all of your outgoings. In fact, you need to take your outgoings down to zero and any opportunity that crops up to get some extra money, to get some extra eyes on you, you need to take it. When it was in 2008, I would play the opening of a fridge door, not just for the money, because a lot of the times it was free. It was because I knew I was building up stock. I was building up leverage. So right now, if you're not playing and you are well, I suggest you should be playing. When it comes to your outgoing, everything comes down. What can you take out of your monthly outgoings that you don't absolutely need to help you progress for the next month, two months, or three months? Now there's many apps online to help with this, but have a think about a little cash flow. So for the people who are in my exclusive community group, they have access to a hub and in there is a cash flow, something you can build yourself or go online and see if you can find one. When you do it, you get to put in all of your income and all of your outgoings and see what you can do without and what difference it makes at the end of the month. Which leads me on to my next point, number seven. This is not going away anytime soon. This won't be gone next weekend or the weekend after. When you think about all of the industries that are collapsing every single week, from the airline industry, the hospitality industry, the music industry, the sport industry, even the high street, everyone is panicking and everyone doesn't know where they're gonna be in the next couple of months. So this is gonna cause a lot of bankruptcies and a lot of problems. So you need to be thinking about the long term. You need to be thinking of a marathon and not a race. How long can you survive 
for and therefore what work do you need to take on that you probably wouldn't have taken on a couple of months ago in order to keep you going for the next three to six months. This one is a hard pill to swallow. Be prepared to take on some work outside of the music industry. Yes, of course, none of us want to do that, but I would rather you live to fight another day rather than be stubborn enough to keep going until everything's gone and you are in proper dire need. So subsidizing your wage with some extra work which isn't music might be a sensible thing. Let's face it, we have not been in a predicament like this. The last huge pandemic we had of this size seems to be, from what I can gather, the Spanish flu or whatever it was called back then, which was in like 1918, it was a hundred years ago. We don't know where this is gonna go over the next three to six months. So right now, you need to look after yourself and your finances. Tip number nine, your song repertoire. Yes, I talked about practice, but I'm talking about your repertoire. Bands constantly should be updating their song repertoire, whether they're a covers band, a functions band, an originals band. Effectively, it's how you are going to progress and evolve. Because if you think about 2008, the songs that were being brought in was Mr. Brightside and Sex on Fire. And if you think about 2011, it was Uptown Funk by Bruno Mars. And every couple of years, it gets updated because that is what people want to hear. You need to make sure that you are as up to date as possible because if you do get called to do a gig to just stand in as a musician, there will be industry standards of today and not of yesteryear. And the last thing you need to do is start turning up and figuring out whether the band can play Mustang Sally or I will survive. That to me is so key when it comes to getting more work is the 1% is making sure that you've got an up-to-date repertoire that you can send out to people to get more work in and you can send out to other bands to say, here I am, I can do this. And one more point, this doesn't just count if you're in a covers band. Think about it. There are original bands out there that have got opportunities that they absolutely do not want to let go. However, if that bass player or that drummer can't do the gig because they're ill and they desperately don't want that opportunity to pass by and you say, give me a set list, I'm gonna jump in and I'm gonna do that gig, everyone's a winner. And number 10, can you sing? Now, everyone can sing a bit, but if you can sing a bit, you can sing a decent amount. If you can sing a decent amount, you can front a band. The best decision I ever made was deciding that I could front and sing in a band. Now, I've done about 2,000 gigs, and the weird thing is I would never, ever class myself as a singer, but I've probably done as many gigs as a singing bass player as I have done as a bass player but I'm a bass player and I don't class myself as a singer. But this weekend, if the shit hits the fan and there's a singer needed, I will be on that gig faster than a whip it with a bum full of dynamite. And even though this is kind of like a top 10 and this is a, a bonus point, what extra things can you do? Rather than lowering your prices, which you might need to do, what can you do to add in extra? For example, can you sing? Can you drive? Do you own a PA? Do you own extra gear? What's the extra bits that you can do to make you more employable and therefore a better option than the people who are next to you? There are opportunities all over the place. And I promise you, I've been through this, we are about to see a lot of opportunities as well as a lot of problems. The key is who is gonna jump on the opportunities and who is gonna fall over at the problems. So it's a bit of a crazy time and I'm sure we're all waking up and checking the news and worrying about the future, but I wanna hear what your thoughts are. Anything to do with the coronavirus, I want them in the comments below. I wanna know what gigs you've got, what you've lost, what opportunities you've had, what you're doing about it, anything at all coronavirus related compared to the music and the music industry that is working or not working for you, let's discuss it in the comments below. I will be there to meet you. So guys, thanks for watching. I haven't monetized this. I can't monetize it because it's a coronavirus video, but I do think this is such an important video that needs to be made. So if you can do me a favor, if it has helped, if you can hit that like or subscribe button, more importantly, just come and be a part of this community because we are all in this together. But thanks for watching and I'll hopefully see you guys tomorrow.